friendly confines after an adventure with Diana uh, this afternoon. And we got over to Tom Brown Park. Uh, she really enjoyed that playground and made some friends. And then we went on a nature walk. But by that time, both of us were a little worn out. So we headed back to, to find refuge here at the house. Uh, Grandpa is watching her while I take care of putting a proper devotional together for you. We've been talking all week about the what naturally flows out of us if we are in right relationship with God. Therefore, giving us confidence that if we see the evidence of, of God in, in our words and our actions and how we carry ourselves, then then we know we're on the right track. If we see things from the world seeping into our words, actions, and how we carry ourselves, we know we need to, to do some work, we need to, to make sure that we are staying more in touch with God. So mentioned on Wednesday that these lessons that God teaches us come with a practical, come with a, a time of, of testing, as we would talk in, in the church. And that's if we finish up in Galatians 6, or Galatians 5, and move on to Galatians 6, that's exactly what we find. Find Paul teaching us that the next opportunity you have to minister to someone, minister to somebody that is difficult to minister to, You'll be able to to observe those that outflow of God's spirit come to the fore. If you find yourself struggling to minister to somebody who is difficult, then perhaps we have this relationship with God that's about words, but not about actually putting it into practice. So that's where we find ourselves as we wrap up this week, and that's where you find yourself each and every time that you uh, have a, an aha moment with God is, okay, I, I finally received God's word. Now it's time to do God's word. So we just transition into Galatians 6, 1, and it says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. What did we define as the, the command that Jesus was giving us? Love one another. Jesus said two things sum up all of the law. Love God with all that you are and love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the lesson that God has been putting to the fore over the last few weeks for us. So here's the practical. We come across someone who needs a word of correction. Are we handling that person who is very vulnerable and could either move further away from God or closer to God? Are we handling them properly? Are we judgmental? Are we condemning? Are we celebrating their failure? That's not what God is asking of us. That's not the right stuff coming out. Are we patient? Are we kind? Are we willing to, to forgive and, and not keep that record of wrong? Are we willing to minister to the troubled person like we would minister to someone who is our encourager? If the answer is yes, then we are tracking in the right direction and you've passed that test. If you think you are too important to help someone, 
You're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. This is the NLT, and the language is a bit different, but again, Paul is has shared the word of God, told us of the fruit of the Spirit, and now here is where you can be looking for the fruit of the Spirit. If you're arrogant and believe that you are, are righteous in your own ability, and everyone else is a failure, chances are you are not connected into a proper relationship with God. Chances are you've allowed the world to influence how you speak and how you act. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we all are each responsible for our own conduct. Run your race. I think we've hit upon that a few times. We spoke of looking out into the world and seeing the brokenness and seeing all the areas that God needs to move in. The first place that we invite him into is our own heart, our own situation. We get it right and we apply the things that God has asked for us to apply, and that outflowing of the Spirit can do miracles. The word of encouragement, the word of, of, that will impact a person's life for the rest of their days can be spoken as God intended us to speak it. That's it, it's that simple. And it's also one of the most difficult things to accomplish because we are so accustomed to relying on our, our, the wisdom, our own wisdom and the wisdom of the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this word, and we thank you, Lord, that you give us a workshop to apply that word to our daily lives. You have placed encouragers around us and people that, that are striving towards you like we are. Then you place another group around us, Lord, that need your love. We often struggle and find it difficult to minister to those that don't seem to have a heart for you, Lord. We trust you, Lord, that nothing that passes through us is wasted. Although we may not see the growth immediately, we pray that those seeds would be planted on the time of your, of your schedule, Lord. They would come to the fore and lives would be impacted and changed. We pray, Lord, that we would see a harvest, that the words that we share, the, the work that we, we seek to accomplish would not just clatter to the floor, but would flourish. This world needs you, Lord. Help us to be prepared when they turn towards you to have the proper words and the proper heart and carry ourselves well. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Got noisy neighbors. All right. See you back here on Sunday. Hope to see you all in church. If not, I guess I'll see you back here specifically on Monday. Thanks for, for joining me on this journey. I'm enjoying seeing uh, different parts of the church start to light up and come alive. And I pray that we'll see more and more. Know that I love you and I miss you. Till we see each other again, be good. Mm -hmm.